Whoops. It's hard to get a good sound from an out of tune guitar. It's harder still to get good insights from out of tune analytics. Good data management goes beyond surface level. It's about finding harmony between your systems. Zap Data Hub provides a powerful platform for managing your data with intuitive tools for building dashboards and financial reports. Whether it's ERP, CRM or HR systems, Zap's pre-built data models make it simple to get your data. Trust your data to Zap and be confident that you're looking at the real deal. Hey, who is in my studio? So welcome to, to our webinar, Mastering, uh, Mastering Data Army in a World of Chaos. Uh, this is indeed a, a relevant and timely topic, especially given the increasing volume, velocity and variety of data that we generate in, in today's digital age. So with us on the call is Alexi. Uh, he's the G uh, regional director and operations of channels for, for MIA, for ZAP. Um, and Alexi comes with, with quite a, a significant experience in, in, in ERPs as well as the uh, BI and, and the cloud technology. So Alexi, without further ado, um, let's go into this and, and start uh, talking about how we can get our uh, data in, uh, in harmony. Great. Thank you, Ian, and thank you for that introduction. That's great. All right. Thank you, everyone, for, for making the time. Uh, this is just sort of the agenda that I want to cover today, and uh, these are just some of the topics that I want to talk about, you know, where you talk about surviving with data, the key components of what, of what makes up data harmony, where we're going to look at things like best practices for achieving data harmony, and then we'll even talk about Zap Data Hub as a product with SAP Business One. Uh, talk about the perfect combination and then we'll sort of end off with the conclusion. So if I look at the, you know, I, I want to just use an analogy here where we talk about surviving with data. Now, we looked at things like, uh, I'm going to use an example of like the Formula One, uh, you know, where how businesses today consume or ingest data compared to how they used to, for example. You know, very much in the, in the past, it was more about gut feel um, oh. and, the amount of data that's actually being used today to sort of start making decisions and reshaping, you know, the, the sports landscape from the ground up. And this is where it sort of gives you the competitive advantage uh, or the competitive edge. So if you look at like Formula One today, it's it's more like, you know, large amounts of data is consumed where you're looking at things like uh, wear and tear on your tires, looking at fuel consumption, looking at weather patterns, looking at other drivers, you know, uh, looking at their weaknesses and it's all about how you know how how do you actually get to the point where you can actually win because that's the that's the end goal is actually to win yeah. um I, i've got another one where i sort of bring it a little bit closer to home um i don't know if anybody's watched the the series uh, chasing the sun 2 and you, you know all about the the world cup and with the spring box and in that series you actually see where you know all the different coaches um Tactical coaches, there's the head coach, there's the, the backline coaches, all these different coaches are presenting some analytics and they're actually getting some data around the team and, and come up with a bit of a strategy. And it's there's a lot of work that actually goes behind that. Just if you ever look at something like the game against France, for example, where I think a lot of people sort of thought that they were going to have a heart attack after that game. Uh, but it was all part of the plan. It was all part of how much, you know, all the data that they actually got together and and came up with a strategy to 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 win that game. But I think, you know, especially when we look at uh, data and, you know, it's, there could be things about too much data or data locked away in different isolated silos. This is where we start looking at data chaos because how do I actually take all this together and, and create something? And this is where we looked at, the, you know, the topic of this is achieving data harmony. So we want to look at things like taking this from chaos and essentially to a nice calm state where I've got the harmony of my data with SAP Business One. Right. So the first thing that we look at from a data harmony is these key components. So we break it down from you know data data integration. So data harmony is achieved through a combination of key components that work together to create a unified and effective data environment. These components include data integration, which involves seamlessly merging data from various sources. 
Data quality, which focuses on ensuring the accuracy, completeness, and consistency of data. Data governance, which involves establishing policies and procedures for data management. And data analytics, which involves utilizing data for insights and decision making. Now, when we look at things for best practices for achieving data harmony, uh, it's not just about implementing the right tools yeah. and, and, and technologies. It's It also yeah. requires adopting the best practices that foster a data-driven culture and promotes collaboration across the organization. Key best practices include establishing a data-driven culture that values the importance of data in decision-making, investing in data management tools uh, that streamlines data integration, quality, governance, and maybe even analytics, promoting collaboration amongst different teams and uh, departments to ensure data consistency and alignment, implementing agile data um, architecture that can adapt to changing business needs and embrace continuous improvement to continuously enhance our quality of our governance processes. So, um, I think where I want to talk about, uh, you know, why why use a product like Zap, and what what is the differentiator? What what actually makes us the, the the differentiator is the way that we can automate the data management, where we can bring in data from, uh, you know, into you know, into a data warehouse, and then we can actually create this as a, a we sorry. I need to just apologize there. I've just lost my words there. So why why is that? Um, is that we can actually automate the data to to, uh, to the BI tool of choice. And this is where we talk about us being the differentiator to other BI tools, uh, which also makes it quicker and simpler to collect and integrate and prepare data for analysis. Our solution is a robust out of the box, you know, with certain calculations and actually can be reused across you know, all analytics and can be managed centrally as well. Our solution is live in hours, not months. Um, so it's, it's really, really quick to actually deploy. And that's thanks to our pre-built uh, solution for SAP Business One, uh, creating these data models, uh, analytics, and all of this gets deployed as an out-of-the-box out of the box solution. <coughs> Excuse me, I, I've got a bit of flu, so that I will have a bit of a cough here. Um, and obviously being in the cloud, you know, your solution is always automatically kept up to date. So us as an organization where we look at um, adding new features, maybe, uh, you know, this is where uh, you will automatically have those features available to you. Okay. So we plug into SAP Business One database uh, or to other multifaceted uh, device, you know, connectivities, and we make it easy to bring data in whenever it is needed, basically, or on demand. Now, the other part that I want to talk about is that the sort of from a front end point of view, where you can actually use Zap, uh, Zap BI as your front end, or you can actually use other tools like, for example, Power BI, um, and I'll actually cover that in some other slides. So, so, so Alexi, basically, what what we're saying is that uh, let's say I've got operational data that does not necessarily sit within SAP Business One. Um, uh, Example that I can use is there's, there's a machine on the shop floor, for example, that uh, contains certain uh, certain data. We send a works order to this machine so that it can can do what it needs to do. But there's other data that that's contained in there, like uh, stock and stop times, um, maybe efficiency uh, individuals that work the machine. So, uh, how do we how do we get that data? Is it, can can we connect to to various sources and connect all this data together? Is that what you're saying? I'm glad you asked that question, uh, Ian. And this is actually sort of brings me to my next slide where we talk about our architecture. So I'm gonna yeah. just cover a little bit of this where we look at Zap from an architecture perspective. We've got, and I'll just quickly, uh, let me get my laser pointer over here. So we've got, yes, I think the answer first of all is that we can connect to multiple data sources, whether it be data sync in Excel, could be sitting in other uh, other different uh, systems, for example. So we talk yeah. about data being locked away in isolated silos. But the idea behind this is that we've actually got what we call our data collection. Cool. Now, this data collection actually extracts data from these various different data sources, and it brings it into what we call a data model. 
So we talk about this being a unified data model. Okay. Now, this is where we can merge information or bring data in, and we can then start doing, uh, we can start modeling the data. Now, I'm going to use a little bit of an analogy. If you want to make a man out of clay, for example, you've got to model that clay into that point to create that shape. And this is what you're doing with data. You're getting that data into the right shape um, so that you can now use that for your, prepare that for your analytics. So from there, we've got our data modeling, which is in the data warehouse, and you, you're adding certain transformations, calculations. And a lot of this has already been done for you. So for example, when you're using SAP Business One, um, and things like currency conversion is already included and already done in the model for you. Uh, where you want to do things like multiple companies and you want to aggregate the data for multiple companies up, we're already doing that out of the box. Where yeah. you want to do certain things like maybe fun, financial consolidation or you want to do uh, things like that where you want to look at uh, intercompany transactions, this is where you can start actually applying that logic in the model so this is where it's a it's a no code system um, but it's got the flexibility for you to actually shape the data in the way that you want so so calculations um, meaning that sorry for, for interrupting so calculations that you also have is um ready made is like year to date month to date quarter to date stuff like that so so the, the individual using the system does not have to go and now create those formulas to actually calculate those values 100% correct. That's right. So exactly that. Uh, time-based reporting, we are very, very strong when it comes to time-based reporting, and we've we've already created all those calculations in the system. Um, but you can even create those calculations yourself. Um, okay. Things like uh, looking at trend analysis, you know, very, very easy and very uh, powerful uh, tool to do within Zap as well. So um, the date function in our solution, we've actually created a, a, a what we call our date function. And that gives you the month to date, the year to date, uh, where you want to look at the rolling 12 months, for example, or you want to compare, you know, this time, this month compared to last year, for example, uh, or this time last year, you can do things like that. Where you want to look at things like certain week patterns, for example. So you might be in the retail space and you might follow certain week patterns like a 445 or 454. Or 52, 53, okay. we can also look at, we can also do things like that as well. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll cover that a little bit more, Ian, when I go into the actual product, uh, okay, just to show how you can actually break down your reporting uh, when it comes to date and you, the hierarchy we create around that. So, okay, so this is really about more collecting the data and creating that data set and shaping the data into the form that you want. Then from there, what we look at is that um, it's essentially there where you can now choose the right platform that you want. So you can either have your analytics in Zap as your front end, or yeah. you could choose Power BI, for example. There's certain certain uh, customers or certain businesses where Power BI is part of their strategy, and they, um, you know, there are some limitations when it comes to just having a Power BI because it's just more of a front end tool, but it's this is where we prepare the data for the front end tool. So this okay. is where I've got these these three here, uh, just to just to show that there's that flexibility of whatever you want to use the front end, you can use. Uh, if you don't have anything, you can use Zap. But if you have invested in other tools, for example, you use Zap as your data management solution for that point. Now, one thing to mention around this is that we are a software we do offer this as a software as a service so we are cloud first uh, this is hosted in azure so this is now really bringing your data into the cloud uh, if you have uh, multiple branches for example in different locations for example uh, and you want to look at that kind of style of reporting where you can access it from the cloud this is where we can do that and you can even look at it from a tablet point of view you know a laptop or a tablet all right so i'm going to quickly just uh Ian, did you have any other questions around this? No, no, I'm I'm good, thanks. Okay, so I'm going to open up the the product um, and just cover a little bit of what you get out of the box with a product like Zap. Now, once I've connected to Zap Business One, I'll have like these different folders. You can actually see these different what we call tiles. Uh, these are the different modules 
uh, that would get deployed. Now, if I was not running manufacturing, for example, manufacturing would not be there. Um, if I was not running, you know, maybe I was just running SA, SAP business one just for finance, for example, I'd only have a finance tile there. So it's all really dependent on what your data actually looks like from there. Now, um, so I'm going to start off with, let's actually look at some of the, uh, the dashboard. So we've actually looked at the different personas in a business. What would essentially the, the, the examples of KPIs that they would want to see? So, for example, if I open up the inventory manager dashboard, this is essentially what we would see as a good starting point when it comes to your inventory. Now, the first thing you see on the left-hand side is we've got some slices. So, it gives me the ability to slice this by company, for example. So, if I had multiple companies and I want to, you know, other analyze this as a group or I want to just click on a specific company, you'll see that everything refreshes based on what I've selected there. All right, so I'm going to just, uh, for now, just leave it like that. We can then look at, you know, what was my, what did my stock look like in the previous month? So the minute I go and do that, you'll see all of this information just refreshes there. I can then break this down by storage location, item groups, yeah, units of measure, for example. And then we have what we call a performance card. So, you know, the performance card now, is give me this information in a rich text format quite quickly so that I, as the inventory manager, can actually you know, quickly look at that and say, okay, I can start making informed decisions just based on what I'm seeing there. So this is what's my inventory, uh, my days of supply, what's my opening balance, what's my backwater rate, and so on and so forth. Now, we can look at our inventory turn, we can look at our valuation of our stock. So this is looking at the total valuation and then compare and also give me the number what was my month, the previous month, for example. And what's my quantity by issue status? What's my quantity by receipt status? Where I want to look at from a top 10 perspective, I can see what's my top 10 on value or what is my top 10 on hand, for example. So very, very quickly, I can see that information from there. Now, one thing about Zap is because we create a data warehouse, you've got now this ability to do a cross well data warehouse and cube should i say you've got yeah. this ability to do some cr like cross reporting for example so in this example i've got my inventory to sales ratio so i'm actually looking at my his you know over the last 12 months look at my historic inventory value and then also show me my sales and give me that 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 sort of inventory to sales ratio uh from that point so this is where we're now comparing this to two different actual modules within sap business one okay now, uh, not only do you get just dashboards, there are, for example, I'll open up one, which is a, quite a nice report to look at, and let's maybe look at the inventory days of supply. So this is like a your row column type of report where, you know, I've got, you know, I can analyze all my SKUs, for example, see what's on hand, uh, what's my inventory valuation, what's my number of days of supply. And if I want to, I can actually export this to a PDF, CSV or Excel, or I can even automate this to be sent out, for example, in an Excel format to someone on a specific schedule. So we can do that level of automation as well. Right. All right. Now, one thing you've noticed yet is that I'm actually using just the browser. Uh, mm. Everything that I've done so far, just by the consumer view, this is what we call the consumer view, has been on the browser. Uh, so let's go look at something else. So. From sales, let's go maybe to uh, I mean from from inventory. Let's actually open up something like sales. Now, in this particular example, uh, we are like let's say a multinational uh, business organization, for example, and I want to analyze my multiple companies. I want to see who are my top five customers, who's my top sales reps. I see I'm number two there, which is great. Uh, well done. I can. <laughs> uh, I can see, you know, which is my top top five product classes, and obviously what are the returns by those product classes. Now, here's the very cool example. I want to see, for example, who was the sales rep, what was the product class uh, by this customer. If I could just go and select that, you can have it where it will filter that information now to to break that down into, you know, what that was. Mm. Or I want to look at, for example, who are my top five customers if I want to look at something like the UK. And that actually breaks it down to these particular two customers. These these two 
are basically what makes up my top five from there. Or if I look at USA, for example, these are these are basically the, the the these make up my top five from their point. Now, so one thing I just to mention is that it's not just about dashboards. There are drill through reports. So, for example, let's actually look at uh, here. We're looking at the sales orders for the year by item groups, but I actually want to break it down to specific items. So I can see what my back order amount is. I can see all the the, the order amount. But I can actually right click it and say, you know what, let's actually drill into the order analysis by item. So what that's going to do is it's going to just give me a lot more detail of how we actually see that. Now, feature functionality wise, for example, we can see this order amount is, and I want to actually drill down in more. I can actually say create the detail and this will get it down to the transaction level of how we actually get to that number. So any number in the system, you can drill down right to the detail level of that particular number now, and that's where we get the the, the, the details from that. Uh, this is fully customizable, so you can tweak and change uh, certain KPIs maybe that are not relevant to you to be more relevant. For example, if I wanted to take out certain columns here, I can quite quickly put this into a design mode and then remove what doesn't what I don't actually need in this particular report. All right. I mean, so, so what's nice about this is that is, is that it comes with um, certain reports and, and, and certain dashboards already built. So it gives you um, a, a view of what is possible and you can just then go and, you know, build on that, um, build your own uh, or take whatever is existing and, and then just improve on that so that it fits your needs at the end of the day. Exactly, exactly. So this is where I, I always say that th this is a good starting point because like generally yeah. someone gets a, 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 you know, a reporting tool and it's sort of the case of, okay, we bought this tool. Uh, what are we going to build? Yeah. And it's like, uh, I don't know. What do we, what should we, what let's, let's come up with a bit of a wish list, you know? Yeah. So I, I always find that when you've got something, a good start, if you've got something that you really work with, then it's yeah. sort of, okay, uh, I don't need that, but I would like to probably replace that with this. Um, yes. and and that's where this makes it just so much easier and uh you know this is where we talk about um you know where uh what's what's the word is that you know the time that it takes to actually get you live is very very quick uh, yeah. because you've got the out of the box solution already with the, the dashboards and with the model side of things yeah all right um uh, so let me click on the back button of the browser here and it'll take me straight back to the sales manager dashboard. And we can also look then maybe something like finance, for example. So I think that's quite a, quite a key thing here. Now, if I open up finance, you'll notice it actually breaks it down to accounts payable, accounts receivable. We've got the general ledger as well. Uh, and in set, you know, we like always to show the person who signs the checks first, his dashboard. So okay. essentially it would be the CFO. So CFO gets to work, opens up, you know, he's got his coffee and he opens up his dashboard and he's got a nice holistic view, first of all, of how finance is actually looking for, you know, for the month. You can see very quickly what his net sales is, what's his gross margin and operating profit. Those are, th I would say when it comes to income statement, those are the three, well, I can call it the five main things that he really wants to see there. The rest of it is more just down to the detail about expenses and things like that. So yeah. then from here, so you can see that on the left hand side, we've got my PL metrics. Sorry, can we just uh, mute? There, please. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Then you've got your, your sort of cash cycle metrics over here. And then on the right hand side, we've got our balance sheet metrics. Now, very much like what I showed earlier on, uh, I did mention things like the date hierarchy where you can have your yeah. levels of hierarchy so for example if i look at the gross margin over time let me just uh, maximize this this one quickly uh, and i want to look at like let's take for example my net sales so i can hover over each month now and i can see what's my net sales what's my my cost of goods and what's my gross margin so this is like more of a trend analysis we can see what our gross margin is over time but like let's take i want to inquire 
this net sales for the month of February was 3.1 million. How did we get to that number? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. Let's actually drill down into that month. And now we can actually see by day of that month. So I can break it, as I said, like your levels of, let's say, highest level being the year, break it down to quarter, down to month, down to day. And this is where you've got now those levels of reporting for that point. So uh, annual reports, you know, you can actually drill down all the way to month uh, for the or day, for example. It gives you that ability from that point. So I'm going to just drill up. Uh, but there, Sechi was just showing me the movements and it was even breaking it down to say, only show me the days where I have movements. So don't, uh, if there's a day that we had no movements, I don't really want to see it. Uh, we could also look at like, uh, like I showed in the uh, in the sales manager, where we went and we looked at the amounts and we went to look at the detail. You know, how did we get to this cost of, how did we get to this cost of goods? We got, mm. we want to create that detailed report. So this mm -hmm. is where we take all those deal accounts at a journal level and we can actually now see all that, that information that makes up that particular number. <coughs> all right. Now, so this, these are just three KPIs, essentially, that would be on income statement. Net sales, cost of goods, gross margin. Mm -hmm. But I want to get a little bit further into this. I want to go and actually see more around the income statement. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually drill in to the income statement from this particular report. So. Okay. Immediately from there, I've got now my income statement. I can see my actual amounts. I can have my budgets. Uh, my budget could be sitting in uh, SAP Business One. It could be sitting in Excel. It could even be sitting in a separate budgeting system, for example. Maybe you might have a separate, separate tool that you might be using. We can actually bring that data together, and you're now viewing this report from multiple sources uh, in, one, in one report. So from here, we've got... And this is just an example of a, a PL where we've got the actual amounts and budgets, and, uh, and here we break it down by month and we can break it down by year. If I wanted to edit this report and maybe add in a quarter to date, for example, it's very, very quick in the, in the space of like, let's say, three or four clicks, I can have that done. But already, as you can see here, we've got some metrics on the right hand side. So, for example, I'm looking at my net sales, I can see already month to date, I can see my here's my quarter to date. I can see last quarter, year quarter to date, year to date, and even last year, year to date. So already we're seeing some metrics of what we're seeing on the right hand side, some benchmarks and metrics based on that. All right. Um, let me quickly go back to finance and let's actually look at other reports, for example. So I might have things like there's expenses, we have things like cash flow, for example. I'll open up. The, the cash flow dashboard. So, uh, you know, everyone has needs a cash flow dash a cash flow report or cash flow dashboard, mm. uh, and we have something like that. This really really helps to give you a lot of the stuff that you need that's already out of the box. So let's actually look at some other stuff. So let's go to general ledger. We'll go to statements, and you've already got, you know, bal balance sheets, balance sheet with monthly balances monthly movements. Let's actually look at another version of a profit and loss. So here in this case, I have actually got, you know, each month, so a rolling PL. But mm. at this particular point, I've only got budget for May. So you can see that my budgets for May, June, July, August, and September and October. November's got no budget, and December's got no budget. But my actual amounts, because we are not there yet, has not actually come through in my in my PL. So it's only showing me for the month that I'm currently in. All right. So as you go by, it's really about having these reports on hand or on demand. Click on a click on a button or open the report and you've got now your report with your data automatically refreshed. All right. And there's no need to spend time on manual you know, building reports manually. So mm. the idea behind Zap is that for those customers that spend a lot of time building a lot of reports in Excel, uh, you know, there can always be human error and things like that. This is where we are actually take, taking that, you know, all that heavy lifting and we're actually applying it into something that's going to be, 
you know, that you're going to be using. And we're creating that single source of the truth. Mm. <clears throat> One more day. And, and the thing about Excel as well, we, we all know Excel is, is extremely powerful and, and you can do a lot with Excel. Um, but but that too has its limitations at the end of the day. So, yeah, this is this is just taking and, and even even if you do have data in Excel, like you mentioned, you can you can still pull it in into into Zap in any case. Correct. That's right. So yeah. uh, I'll give you a quick example. I hope it does actually work. Well, not not work, but I mean, uh, I hope my Excel doesn't give me any problems today. Yeah. But if, if, for example, let me just take something like the profit and loss, not the annual one. I'll do the other one. So let's just do the one that I've got here. And, you know, very quickly, I want to just export this to Excel. So I'm going to quickly just export that. And that'll download. And just want to, so there is my Excel sheet that's just a pop, popped up here. I'm just going to move it to the screen. Come on. Let me just move it. There we go. So essentially there is like what I've just exported to Excel. Now, mm -hmm. one thing to note is that we'll have an extra worksheet here where it says information. And this gives you all the information as to what slices were used, were there any wow. filters, and when was this actually executed. So I can see that this was executed today at 8.34, which is GMT. Okay. So yeah. Um, so. Uh, quite a nice little feature there. Um, you know, the numbers come through properly. You can actually, if I just hover over it, you can see that it does sum it up. So, or it's not uh, like a, it's the numbers are static, but you can still go and add calculations and things like that. There's no kind of V lookups and things like that. So this is really nice for the point where I can, you know, export this and actually give this to somebody, either as Excel or a PDF. Um, I can even actually to the point I can automate this process where Zap will automatically take that information, create this Excel sheet, and email it to them on a specific schedule. So we can actually automate the, that process as well. All right. So from here, uh, I think there was this one other thing I wanted to just, well, two other things I wanted to cover is the our actual solution, the, the, the connectors that we have. So these are all the connectors that we actually have out of the box. And this is where you can really mix and match uh, these connectors to bring this into a model to use for your for your data. So, for example, we've got my uh, SAP Business One over here. And this is going to deploy the, the solution for SAP Business One. We can connect to SQL. We can connect to HANA. Um, and then I want to add other data. So I want to look at things like data in Excel. Mm -hmm. I might have another SQL database. Uh, I might have a, let's say, a HubSpot for my CRM system, or I might look at a Salesforce, for example, and I want to bring this all together to now have that kind of reporting. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or I want to look at things like Marketo or Magento or Google Analytics to look at my PPCs, for example. We, you can actually do all that. All right. So um, one thing to cover is that, you know, what I've showed you, it's about literally connecting to SAP Business One and going through these five steps, connecting to the data, creating the model, selecting the data, and then configuring some uh, calendars. And then you've already got those reports now with your data that I was showing you uh, a couple of minutes ago. Okay. Now, uh, just conscious of time, I think we've got about, maybe we're gonna, uh, is, I wanna just cover something about report packs. So where Zap can actually automate uh, like I mentioned, creating reports and sending it out via email, yeah. but I want to have now a, let's say, a whole bunch of reports to create a report pack. Zap also has that ability. So yeah. here's an example that I've just, I've actually just uh, generated just before we uh, started the webinar. And this is my cover page, essentially, you know, looking at the next slide here, this is the CFO dashboard that we looked at. I've just changed some of the colors. But this is now, you know, this could be fit into a color scheme, for example, of a yeah. specific uh, company. We I might look at then having a, you know, and this is something I want to mention here is that, you know, you've got the out of the box stuff, but 
Zap is a platform that you can actually use to build whatever type of report, and it's about drag and dropping. So I'll actually quickly give you, I'll show you maybe uh, in 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 after this, a very quick one of how to build a quick report uh, with with Zap. So here is an example of a balance sheet, and the profit and loss, where we're looking at the group and we're looking at the company. We're just taking all that information together. But then, in that particular case, I might want to have an executive summary and just have it where these numbers are refreshed at the time. So to the point of even templating the uh, executive summary or could be even notes, for example, uh, on the income statement. Then when we look at, uh, like very similar to the one that we saw, the, the annual P&L, for example, I've just taken the budgets away, for example, and just showcasing a rolling P&L in this case. Uh, another PL just by a specific dimension, for example, so financial dimensions. But then we look at things like our expenses. This is a standard dashboard that we get deployed with, with the solution. Now, I like this because this is where we are even taking, we're creating expense groups. So we're taking the uh, GL accounts, we're breaking it up, we mapped, we've mapped all the accounts and we've mapped it into a hierarchy of having different expense groups. Okay. So I can see of my expenses, how much of this is my general expenses, how much of this is my payroll expenses, how much of this is insurance, and how much of this is depreciation as well. So this little circular gauge actually gives me how it's actually broken down, how that that breakdown is actually works. All right. So with that, I've got uh, maybe another two or three more minutes, and then we'll sort of move back to the presentation. But Building a report in Zap, it's really, you know, just clicking, um, for example, opening up, deciding what you want to use. So if I want to create a chart or do you want to create a, like a table or do you want to create a dashboard? So you've got all those different types of options. But here's the thing. You've got, uh, let me just select my, the correct cube here. Um, okay. So the... You've got this ready-made cube. This is the data set. This is the wrong cube as well, sorry. There it is. Um, you've got this data set of your data. So if I wanted to go and open up and create a sales report, or I wanted to create a, gen, a you know, something around the GL, or I want to create something around, you've got now these measures and dimensions, but we've actually transformed those names to make that's that you know, just to make it more easier to understand when it comes to building a report. Mm. So if I wanted to look at now like something on sales, I can say, okay, here's my sales invoice lines. Here's my sales order lines. So if I go and expand on that, I have the, these different components. So it's just about, okay, what would I like in my report? I want my invoice amount. Okay. And as you can see, as I drag and drop that into the column section, so we have a query here, this query section where we can now literally drag and drop the, your measures and dimensions. And here's your blank canvas where you can actually build your, where you, you can actually view what your report's going to look like. So here I've got my sort of uh, invoice amount. And I say, okay, I want to break this down to say, uh, this, give me my month to date. So I'm just going to type in MTD and you'll see uh, that it actually brings up my calculation here. So as I do that, And I click on apply. Mm -hmm. Boom. It's actually created that calculation now with my month to date. So, so quickly, QTD, for example. All right. You know, very, very quickly, there's my report there as well. Okay. So we can see that my quarter to date, obviously, is my, my first month of my quarter so far. So that essentially is now the same. But obviously coming to the next month, so we're in the month of April, that essentially that will look a little bit different. Now, I want to do things like, let's go and look at time, period to date. Let's go look at year to date. And very quickly, as you can see, it will bring it up. So that was just the long way of doing it. Instead of just typing YTD, I could also do it that way. So I could do time, let's go and say 
compare to date, let's say last year, year to date. So these are all the functions that gets deployed out of the box. Now that was really one, two, three, four, five clicks to create a very quick report like that. And then I can actually go and say, okay, let's actually change this into a chart. Let's maybe make this into maybe something that's like a circular gauge. Um, we can actually break it into small multiples, for example. And uh, let's see which will look better here. So I want to do it like that. So, you know, very quickly, I can have now these different ones just to show me, uh, you know, what this actually looks like. And I can add this into a dashboard. So like you saw those different charts, those were all individual reports that gets dragged and dropped into a into a dashboard. All right. Any questions so far from your side, Ian? No, I'm good. Thanks, Alicia. Okay. All right. So I'm going to quickly go back to, let's just close this, just minimize this down, and let's go back to the next slide. Um, so I don't know, Ian, uh, oh, this, wow. is, this is actually a slide for you. <laughs> yeah, well, I love the, the handshake on, on, on this slide. You know, to, to me, uh, this symbolizes our SAP Business One and, and Zap Data get together to create that perfect harmony that we've been talking about. Um, on the one hand, you, you've got SAP Business One as a robust ERP solution for small and medium-sized businesses that basically integrates various operational functions into a single platform that provides our clients with a comprehensive solution to manage their operations you know, efficiently and effectively. So Business One then serves as the central hub for, for managing core business operations and generating transactional data. And now you need to make sense out of that uh, that transactional data. So, and and Business One also has certain things in place to to ensure that the the data that, that goes into it um, also stays stays relevant. So we all know that saying garbage in garbage out. And then on the other hand, you now have Zap Data Hub as a as a robust data management platform. So that. And, and this enables organizations to, like we mentioned, and, and that we've all, all seen, to connect, unify, and automate uh, data from multiple sources. And that, that excites me because you can now take data from, from everywhere and, and bring that together um, to, to report on that. And, and it basically ensures data quality through data governance. And you've got the, the, the analytics capability inside of Zap um, Data Hub as well. So, Zap Data Hub then complements SAP Business One basically by enabling a seamless data integration handshake, enabling the, the transformation of data into actionable insights. So, so that's how I see it. And, and, and to me, these two platforms create this powerful combination that creates the perfect harmony you know, by seamlessly integrating um, and, and providing unified data that can tra be transformed into real-time insights. Um, and that's something that you want uh, when you when you're in a business and, and in this high-paced uh, environment. So you've got these two solutions that that are scalable um, and that can grow with your with your organization's needs as well. So if I now go and look back at, at when we started and we and, and I look at the um, the Formula One example that you used as well as the the chasing the sun example. Um, I'm, I'm convinced that data harmony is crucial to any organization or team that want to derive accurate real-time insight uh, to, to make informed decisions and, and then basically operate efficiently. So yeah, look, and, and I, th I think I think yeah. also one one thing I just want to mention as well, Ian, and, and, and that's that's great. I, I want to also talk about you know where us as a product where we're going, because I mean look, a lot of a lot of uh, you know you, companies get this sort of they do the sort of roll your own, uh, and I, I I use that analogy roll your own, like you know when you roll your own cigarettes, roll yeah. your own data warehouse, and uh, you know <clears throat> where the benefit of going for a tool like Zap is where they where we've got all this investment that we're putting into our product. So if we look at from a roadmap point of view, and in fact we uh, we actually did have my CEO actually gave a, a roadmap session last month where we actually started to invest in things like AI. So as a product, we have already doing creating use cases like, for example, I'll, I'll just use a random example. Take my customer base, mm -hmm. take all the addresses, um, which I which is now comes from my data source, yeah. and then I create a step where I now push this to Copilot to say, 
give me my geolocation for all of those addresses. So it will actually come back and it will give me all the coordinates that gets populated into my data warehouse. And then from there, I can actually take that and use that in my analytics. Or another use case, for example, where I might have, you know, analyze my expenses uh, and just by the description of the expense, tell me sort of what does not make sense and it, and then actually and call it out. And this is where we've actually done those use cases like with ChatGBT, for example, uh, and it actually has worked and it's actually been pretty pretty accurate, which is which is very very great. So we are as an organisation. I mean, I mentioned you know, cloud first. Uh, we're investing in things like new technology and constantly evolving. So in the cloud, you'll always get this, you'll always be first with this, this type of technology. As soon as we yeah. sort of get this kind of stuff, immediately it's pushed to our cloud first before it's to, before it gets pushed to the on-premise customers. So you can run Zap on-premise or you can actually run it in the cloud, but obviously we are cloud first. Okay, great. So, great. So, so I, I like the the example of the um, the geolocations because you know that gives you an idea as well of what type of market share you might have um, in in these different areas as a business and you know basically in your strategy you can now build out to say okay in that specific area we need to invest more time and money. Um, well, so yeah, that, I think. Uh, I mean, we did a thing. So there was another one where we looked at what was the population. You know look at the that geolocation mm. what's the population of that town for example so if you were looking at like trying to build a strategy around let's say how do we do go to market insert you know and we sort of break it down into regions on that okay mm. well this is the this is like a what the size of it is uh mm -hmm. do we do we go 20 percent? do we go 50 percent? uh you know and you can do some kind of forecasting based on that as well Brilliant. so yeah, that's pretty <laughs> quite interesting uh, examples there. But uh, I think it, for us, it's it's quite new. Um, we still we we say it's in our skunk works. Uh, you know, it's and it's, but it's something that we are looking at. I mean, I I do speak to many sort of uh, other BI guys and you know ask them what's their AI strategy, and some of them are like, no, we just created a bot, which is our AI. And I was like, okay, so what is that? So it's like. I want to say, uh, open up my income statement, mm. or open up my sales, or what's my. Uh, we are actually looking at this more from a data management point to actually provide additional data, uh, yeah. which is AI data. Yeah, so basically taking that data and and putting it in in different uh, you know forms that you might not have thought about that the the AI combination thinks of and and brings that forward to you. Uh, so that's fantastic. Um, yeah, so, so you know, in, in, in inclusion for me, um, if I think about it, so SAP Business One and Zap Data Hub, you know, put together, we basically give you the real deal um, when it comes to your data, and and it, it creates perfect harmony. If we looked at all the the things previously that we spoke about, you know, what it is that 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 gives you harmony, I think we tick all the boxes here. Right, right, so um, yeah, yeah, go for it, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> uh, much appreciated. Um, thank you. It's always great chatting to you. Anyone else that has a lot of questions, please uh, contact us so we can set up um, a, a session with you. We can go into more detail and we can look at um, and your at your at your data and see how we can get that in harmony as well, uh, and and do a bit more of an in-depth dive into into Zap Data Hub as well.